Thanks, Matt. So, a gesture of trust or a ruse to regroup. The Russian military has declared it will fundamentally scale back its operations around two of Ukraine's key battlegrounds. So far, it's met a skeptical response from the West, which has warned there is what Russia says and what Russia does, and we are focused on the latter. After the latest face-to-face -face talks with Ukraine, Russia's deputy defense minister claimed Moscow would reduce military activity around Kiev and the northern city of Chernihiv. Their forces will focus on the eastern region of Donbass, where Russian-backed separatists already control a large amount of territory. Ukrainian officials proposed a 15-year process of negotiations about the status of Crimea. It's currently occupied by Russia, a status not recognized by Ukraine or the international community. But at the very moment the talks were underway, the southern city of Mykolaiv was coming under direct Russian attack. Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, is there. Alex. Indeed, Russia ramping up the diplomacy, as you've just been saying. Now, there is some evidence, and it's sourced from local people filming, and it's sourced from defence sources both in the US and in the UK, that Russia is indeed moving large amounts of armour north back into Belarus. But, of course, they would say it's just a redeployment to those eastern areas of Donbass and Luhansk, and ever a lot of scepticism about that. That scepticism will be shared, is very much shared, I can tell you, by people right here in Mykolaiv. They saw a number of strikes here overnight, and one particularly large strike, a guided missile, around breakfast time this, mor this morning, which has resulted in a considerable number of deaths and injuries of people in that building. A run-of-the-mill civil service administration building. Then Russia invaded, and it had a new designation in the eyes of Moscow, a target. For it is the headquarters now of the popular regional governor, Vitaly Kim. For days now, the world has witnessed the effects of imprecise Russian artillery, bombs and missile strikes. Here in Mykolaiv this morning, we have seen something of an altogether different order. A precise missile strike clearly designed to kill the regional governor. This one of ten strikes to hit this half-empty city overnight. Fire crews continue their search for bodies in the mangled concrete contortion once people's offices. 8.30 this morning, security camera footage. The naked eye barely detects the incoming missile. Slowed down, it is clear, precision bombing of the regional government building, part civilian, part military. The last figures we had from the military say nine people killed, 22 injured. You felt the impact almost a mile away across the city. Some just looked on at the wreckage in tears. American Roger Hill has lived round the corner from the missile impact for four years. Well, all, all of a sudden I'm sitting at my computer reading the news, the first thing I do in the morning, and all of a sudden, boom! And everything's shaking and I thought, well, that was kind of close by here. Think regional version of President Zelensky when you think Governor Kim and you've got it. The semi-military dress code. What can I do? Cry? We're working here. It's a war. Daily broadcasts online to boost morale. The Beamer convertible, fully converted. The social media jokes. <laughs> Try this. A country with a chicken on its flag shouldn't invade one with a fork on its flag. You get the style. In the bomb shelter this morning, our hotel staff understandably anxious, but there was outright joy later when we told them Governor Kim had survived. Across Mykolaiv, they're chopping down the city's beloved trees. But people kept coming up to us and complaining. The trees, she says, incensed Governor Kim is allowing them to be felled, war or no war. Well, at the moment, we're cutting down the trees so that the territorial defence can use them for barricades and trenches. The frontline villages around this city may be partially reduced to rubble, but what makes Governor Kim even more of a target for Moscow 
is perhaps that the defense of Mykolaiv is now morphing into offense to retake the city of Kherson back from the Russians. It was only last Friday afternoon that we were in the now destroyed office block with the governor. Is it possible that Ukrainian army may seek to take Kherson? Maybe. Everything is possible if you want it very much. So everything is possible. It is a question for our military forces and their plans. Away from the battlefield, talks in Turkey to end the war. Expectations low. Putin's unofficial mediator, Roman Abramovich, is there, not visibly poisoned. Russia's deputy defense minister then announcing their forces will pull back from the capital, Kyiv, check against delivery. But these images are believed to show armored columns filmed today moving from the Ukrainian border into Belarus. Back in the war zone, it is hit and miss. No air raid warnings preceded the strike on the governor's office here today, but they came later, sure enough. Yet the traffic still flows, the buses, the trams and tanks. The twilight, half war, half peace of life on Ukraine's southern front. And I can now tell you, I'm afraid, that not nine, but 12 people lost their lives so far in that blast this morning. 33 injured, and I suspect, obviously, those figures may climb overnight. Back to you. Thanks, Alex. Well, earlier I spoke to Russia's deputy ambassador to the United Nations, Dmitry Polyansky, and I started by asking him about these reports that Russian forces are pulling back from areas in the north and whether he could confirm troops are indeed withdrawing. Uh, I heard that uh, the intensity of our operation in uh, Chernigov and uh, Kiev regions will be uh, less than it was before. I haven't heard about any withdrawal. What is the aim of the negotiations now? Uh, I think it's a peace treaty uh, between Russia and Ukraine uh, and uh, safeguard the population of Donbas, uh, which was suffering for eight years from Ukrainian shelling. Right, so the objective seems to have changed since the beginning of this military action. Um, not, are you saying it is now knowledge. just about Donbass? If you were attentive at the beginning when President Putin was announcing this operation, he said that this was the operation for bringing peace to Donbass. So demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine uh, and the uh, primary objective was always Donbass. So why did you attack Kiev? We didn't attack Kiev as far as I understand. Uh, we encircled Kyiv, and there are our troops uh, on the outskirts of Kyiv, but uh, I don't think we attacked Kyiv. Well, it depends how you define attack. You've been sending missiles and artillery into the areas approaching Kyiv, and your soldiers have been there, and now those troops are yeah. pulling back. Uh, as, I, as I formulated at the beginning, at uh, about less intense military operation, but not from pulling back. And uh, by attacking, uh, you mean attacking the city? We didn't attack the city, we attacked uh, military installations. You may not be targeting civilian places, but you're hitting them. Uh, I haven't heard about any uh, occasion of us deliberately hitting civilian infrastructure. Most of the most notorious cases... Are you really that are saying being... that every residential block hit has been hit by accident? Uh, I'm not aware of a number of residential blocks hit, but I heard also about the two most notorious cases that are being attributed to Russia traditionally, the Mariupol uh, nursery, nursery Hospital and Mariupol, Mariupol Theatre, and both cases were debunked by us. Well, they haven't been debunked, they've just been denied. You've, you've offered no evidence and you haven't allowed independent or external uh, observers or foreign journalists in... To see any of it. That's not debunking, that's just denying it. You have the luxury of living in America, so you can see the, the video coming in from independent journalists that your countrymen can't have, because you censor it on Russian television. So you've seen, seen all these images, you can see the truth. I haven't seen any videos coming from independent journalists here, frankly, and I have the disadvantage of living in the United States of America, unfortunately, so of working here. 
So uh, really, it's not the, the kind of evidence that would be trustworthy to me. I mean, Mr. Polyansky, I don't know whether you can hear, but the air raid siren is going off here and I'm in Lviv. You told me at the beginning of this interview that you're only concentrating on Donbass. Why are you sending anything into Lviv airspace in the west of Ukraine? I think this there has might got nothing be some to do with Donbass. It's hundreds of miles away. I think, first of all, there might be some military installations. Uh, secondly, that, that might be some weaponry sent by the West, uh, which is a legitimate target for us, as it was declared. Uh, do if you I may, really believe uh, everything you're saying? I mean, I know it's your job to say this, but do you really believe it? I do believe it, and I have witnesses uh, that uh, in indicate this way. Are you saying that you, you don't believe there are any innocent victims in your war, that you're not killing people, even if it's by accident? Well, there might be, of course, some uh, collateral, uh, collateral victims. Uh, I'm using the American term in this word. Uh, I don't know, because if you are putting a, a rocket fire system in front, of a, if in front of a house, and if this rocket uh, fire system is being hit, of course, there can be victims because of this. But I just want to ask you, the last time we spoke to you and the time before yeah. that, you assured us that there were no plans to invade Ukraine. You said our questions were hysterical and that the claims that there was going to be a war were ridiculous and strange. And it turned out that there was a war. Now, you can justify it now by saying you were provoked. But uh, th the there was a were right, the intelligence was right, the questions were right. Uh, the Americans were wrong in one thing, that because they didn't want to acknowledge that Ukraine uh, is uh, planning to, uh, to, to, to carry out a military operation in Donbas. And again, uh, there, is no, uh, there is no war, there is a special military operation of Russia uh, in, in, uh, in Ukraine. These are two different things. The trouble is, you say, what, when the Ukrainians are fighting, it's a war. When Russia is fighting, it's a special military operation. Well, we must leave it there. Deputy Ambassador, Mr. Polyansky, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you very much. Take care.